Okay, yeah. Bit. Okay, well, maybe you ask me some questions and we'll see if we can help these guys break them all through the other. Yeah, we had a little request, and, and John and I are both dead tired because we've been beating ourselves to death trying to play pool on this table. And, uh, and uh, we're half asleep and, and tired, and so. But uh, we had a request about straight pool break shots, and so we're just going to be on for like a half hour. Oh, let's see. Let's see. The stream health is no drop frames. It looks good. And, uh, of course, we'll save it, and so you can watch it later. There's, there's hardly anybody watching. But we can do it, and, and it'll be uh, uh, on video for people to watch okay. whenever they want. Okay. But we had a request for uh, just a little info on straight pool break shots. And I know, John, John, you could say a couple things about, about breaking with hand racking versus yeah. the rack that we have on this table. Well, wow, it's really, really pretty simple here, okay? For the last 25 years playing the game, when my break shot, when my cue ball is kind of here and over, I just hammered it with high ball, okay? And when it was here, I might hit it with draw or high ball hard, and if it was here, I'd blast it with draw. There was really no magic to it. You just had to shoot straight and make the break ball. Now that everybody's using these little adhesive stick-on template, basically a magic rack, I mean, this break shot here, you could just hit soft with draw, cue ball comes out, four or five balls come out, the 10 comes off the 11, it's usually straight in here. So this is a game changer. It's made me change the way I break. And uh, this table here has been stingy because the cloth's broken in and the pockets are tighter and all that. But still, I think this magic rack, you've got to break soft. And, and I would have never hit a break shot soft in the last 20 years playing straight pull. I, I kind of had a motto of, I'm going to hammer the break shots. And if I'm not scratching that day, I'm going to be tough to beat now. I break soft and I just remove scratching out of the equation almost. I just want to clarify real, real quick for the people who aren't necessarily familiar. Just we'll just define it real carefully. That there, we, there's we got two different types of these racks here, and so these are little stickers that go on the table. You can may, might be able to see a little round one there. This is clear. So for a while I had this outsfill, which is kind of a rectangular shape, and today we changed it out back to this. This one's called the Alpha Rack, and it's little round donuts. And it's, they, it just racks so beautifully. You just roll the balls up there, and they settle into their holes, yeah. and you have a perfectly tight rack. So that's what we're talking. If we say template, we don't mean template. We mean this. Yeah. Like, for example, this break shot right here would be, the problem is it's a draw, it's a draw angle, but it's a follow position. And so I would be in a bad spot, and I would normally blast this. But now with this template, I might just hit this with a high ball and a few millimeters, maybe, maybe four millimeters of inside anus. And just smoothly two rails and out right off the rack like that. I mean, never in my career would I dream of breaking like that. Yeah. So this magic rack thing has changed the way you break playing straight pull. So it, you know, take the scratch out of the equation. Now another way, another break shot that comes up quite often that would never work, except now you can do it, is this one. This this break shot here, of course on camera it's hard to reproduce things, but this break shot here would be a very spooky shot because the cue ball. So this ball's higher. Well, yeah, and if I hit this with draw at high speed, I hit the bottom of the two, I scratch in the corner, or I can scratch in this corner. Now watch, I'm gonna draw into the two at light speed, and the leaven ball comes right out of here and it's straight in the side a lot of times. And I try to remove the scratch out of the equation. You see that? I mean, well, even that's okay. But like, it's fine. like you no. Know, Nowhere throughout history would you really break like this hand racking. It wouldn't yeah. work. So this has changed the way the game's played, the way I play it. Now, when we go back to hand racking, I would tear my rotator cuff off on that break shot, and I would just hammer it. And use a high ball. I would use, yeah, maybe, maybe that one would have been a draw. But, uh, okay. but either way, I'm putting some pace on it. So as you can see, if you're, if you're playing with these, these templates, you shouldn't be scratching too much. It's going to reduce your scratches down. You know, in a week, I might scratch 10 times. Normally, hand racking, I might scratch twice or something. It's unbelievable. And then I, you're seeing this pattern all the time. I know that 11 yeah. ball was right here in the rack. It's uh, going to come out by that side yeah, pocket. Yeah, it's going to go right up there in front of the side. And then I can kind of like, this, like, you know, when I was younger, I really wanted to go into this ball. But now, you might play softer and try to, like, get position uh, underneath where you can really, like, right here, you get a little insurance here. Now I can draw into the ball. I can go, I can keep chipping into them and going into them softly, where I get a I get a shot for sure. Instead of hammering and, stuff around the table. Instead of trying to open them on one shot, you yes. just threw, well, shoot, threw 
three gentle shots and look what you got. Well, it'd be real nice to open them in one shot, but it just doesn't always work like yeah. that. And so here's, here's a perfect rack where, you know, you really should just be not running into anything, right? Yeah. We got the nine and the break shot. This goes here, that leads to those. That's right. If I can get on the seven here, it's great. Let's try to get on the seven. Okay, I come up a little heavy, so now I just, you know, I play shape on the seven and the, and the eight. Right? And the eight at the same time, or the one. Yeah. Here's where, you know, you got to start playing kind of like you can't just shoot whatever. Yeah. This seven is a really Oh, yeah. The ball. Shoot the seven. You notice how short of a bridge I made there? I used that little tiny bridge. Yeah. Um, this rack has gotten away from me a little bit right here. I'm yeah, you got to play good position here. Something else. Yeah, yeah, something else. Well, this is now, this is tricky. I gotta come right in here. Let's try this. Let's try to get right here on the two. Here's the first one. And that's how a run goes. That's because you get too low I on that. Oh, you could good. see it. That was a good shot. Get out of time. Yeah. So here, this rack here, this is another break shot where I normally would blister this. But no, I'm not. Let's see if we can hit this soft. And I'll tell you another thing with this this whole magic rack thing. The balls, you just want the balls to literally open up. Just enough to lay over the holes. And if anything is coming out of the rack, like, like a meteor, like one ball's going way faster than the rest, there's a crevice in there. You didn't rack them tight. All these balls should move at the same pace. Okay. They should open. I mean, they're not all going to open, but they should do this. If one ball's out racing the rest, you didn't rack them tight. So I'm going to try to get the two to, to drive over to the rail and out. The 14 should maybe kind of go downstream. The six, I'm okay. thinking of threatening that hole. But don't scratch here. Don't blast this. Just like that. Look at that two ball. And I can just, I mean, this is just I mean, you can go to the bank on the two ball. Just about. You just know it's going. Just about. Now, this rack, obviously, it would have been nice to open up, but now I go 14, 6, 4. 4 back this way, open them up. Yeah. It's really a, a, a thing, having the patience knowing that the opportunity's there for you right. if you just play it right. right. And just take your time and don't try to panic because the ball's are totally open. Yeah. Now this one, level cue, a lot of high spin, so the cue ball chews through them a little bit. I noticed that. We went a little now, bit more. This is what we're talking about. This table's playing a little humid and slow. The storm system's coming in. Table's playing pretty tough, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I'll just try to mix this table in as far as possible. <laughs> this looks pretty easy, right? Yeah. Well, anyway, you see how controlled those two breaks are? Yeah. I've never seen that. That never is going to work normally. But with the with template, those. your break should be much softer. Somebody type something in. Let's see if they have a question. This is awesome. Hey, S3204. Hey, Charlie. I don't know if it's on my end. The stream isn't clear, a little blurry. No, it's it's on your end, dude. I got a new internet connection, and this is, this is a high-res camera, and... Uh, Should be good. Yeah, it looks good for me. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I'll, I'll look at it, but I, it looks good to me. So give another example. Put the mic on John. Okay, here we go. Little Chris says, put the mic on John. Now you tell us what you're doing here. So now this break shot, we've all seen a million times. Even with the template rack, though, you've got to whack this one. Don't try to baby this. you got to blast it in with inside English and go around. So even, I've, even though we were using a template, this break I would hit normal, and I would hit it pretty firm. Um, okay. And that's now, you get the cue yeah, ball. yeah, but but like this break shot here. I mean, even this break shot here. Now this break shot here, because I'm really going directly into the rack. I'll go ahead and hit this with pace template or not, because you don't want to get stuck. So you need enough power and spin to spin. churn through it. But when you start getting these kind of breaks, these are the ones that have always ended runs. And now all of a sudden, they're quite usable. 
I'm going to try to play for the one on the side here. I mean, or, you know, I don't, I didn't blister them. I just hit them soft. The, the, yeah. I used to scratch down here all the time. I mean, yeah. that's how almost all my gigantic runs in. Now, I literally can go like a week without scratching. It's, it's, I really do believe I could run seven or eight or 100 or 900 or something on the right table with this template that because template? I didn't, I've never used this in, in my life. And yeah. I've seen Shaw run 714. He's a great player, but it's going to make all runs better. I mean, you're just going to break the balls. And your cue ball yeah. didn't even come no. anywhere near a rail. No. I, you know me, I'm kind of, I, I would kind of like to address the, the three people watching here. If, <laughs> if, they, if they saw what happened in Canada with the, with the whole rack thing, I mean, in a nutshell, my racker asked me, because I was hooked. I was at 338, and he, and he asked me, he goes, can I pull the rack down? And I leaned over and I said to him, if you watched it, I didn't tell him to move him down, but I said, yes, you can do that as long as, or no, excuse me, he had to move it up. I said, you can move it up as long as the front ball would still be touching the spot. And you would have thought I put a child in a blender. <laughs> I mean, so looking back, if I would have gave it more thought, I might have said, well, let's just, I mean, let's just, just call it there. There. It but, but, but I promise you this, Bob, I've been playing straight for a long time. <laughs> And I know you get on certain tables and they don't rack tight and you go like this. This isn't even here. So guess what? Is that legal? Is that legal? Is that legal? Well, sure. The ball's touching the spot. Well, but of course, when I'm playing straight pull, it's like, you know, they're going to crucify me for the guy doing this with the rack. He didn't go like this. Yeah. So anyway, I kind of thought I got more criticism than I deserve. It was something I had about a second and a half to side on. I had just talked to P.D. Margo and he told me he was a world champion. He said, we used to move the rack around wherever we needed to, to get them tight. And he goes, the whole moving it up and down a half an inch is not the end of the world. He goes, but that's what's going to happen when you're trying to break a world record on live stream. Everybody's going to crucify you for everything. So I, I think that it was kind of uh, overblown, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> but anyway, so these all look really frozen to me. So now let's get a break shot like this. Here's one here. This one right here would normally just be awful. Now, for the first time ever, I would follow this, and I normally would never, because this is a draw angle. You just follow it and try to come two rails off the stack, and it works a lot. Look at that. Yeah. Well, what's wrong yeah. with that? Look yeah, that. no, I mean. That's your shot. Yeah. Well, that would never work. That whole eight in the side isn't going to happen with hand racking. And now right. I now it happens. I mean, I'm still screwed here. <laughs> I mean, I'm screwed. Don't get me wrong. But I got a half a chance to dribble this in and maybe keep the run going. Yeah. And so, when you guys play straight pull, if you're using the tennis, don't murder the balls because you really don't need to. Let me look. Let me let me look at the chat because some more people are typing some things. I hope that we're 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 doing our best. I hope the sounds okay. No, we're all good. We're all good. So, oh. so uh, give me a give me another example. Okay. Um, of the same thing. Let's just do it with a lower ball. All right. Okay, a lower ball. And when you're using this these little rings, you gotta be careful with the rack or it'll scrape them up. Yeah. Now this one here. See, here's another one. This one here would normally be hammer it and power draw it. Yeah, right. Or, but now, hell, you could just you could just kind of lightly follow this out two rails with a high inside, and just play shape right on the floor. I mean, your ball. and on a table with faster cloth. I mean, I, I get well. I ran six twenty six doing it like this. Yeah, and uh, it works. So you know, that's kind of the new thing. Uh, Masuni would roll over in his grave watching people use this template because it's it makes it easier. Um, yeah, and I believe that I'm going to actually set a table up here pretty soon. I got a lot going on in my personal life, but I'm going to set up a table, and I'm going to try to run a big run. And I, I honestly have doubts and I have fear that my eyes won't hold up, my legs won't hold up, and that uh, I won't be able to, to to run enough balls to do anything. But I'm going to let my cue do the talking. I'm not going to get up here and say I'm going to run a thousand like other people. I'm just going to do my best and. Uh, let my cue do the talking, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. That's all you can do. 
But yeah, you see, but you see how slow I'm making these break shots. It's like it's unbelievable. And I, I never in life would have thought you could do it that way. But. Yeah, and people who watch me trying to play straight pull here, I've experimented a lot with blasting them well, you, and you different gotta, speeds. We'll wrap them and, up and I'll show you how I broke them my whole life, and you tell me which one is better. This is, but now there is times to blast them when right. you have the blast angle like this. Like this angle here, you can kind of let it go. But in the last 20 years, if I had this break shot, I mean, this is how Torsten won five world championships. He'd hit it just like this. And yeah. now look, now you're closing on the end round. And they didn't open it any better. And, and you got to shoot a long shot oh, to yeah, start. Oh, yeah, you got to shoot some one iron off the back rail here. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, this table, though, is playing sluggish and tough. This thing's playing like a nightmare. I haven't been able to run 100 on it all day. I tried. But you ran 98 and well, 99, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, a lot of guys would call that a hundred, but like I say, loan me a hundred thousand, I pay you ninety nine thousand back, and you'll go, hey, it's not a hundred. It's not a hundred yet. <laughs> That's right. Now you can take this to the extremes, okay? You can really um I mean I kind of experimented with this and I was really shocked at how light you can break the ball. Like okay. I mean, you you really can even do this kind of stuff. I mean, these balls come apart half, like not on this table. It's just a little. Yeah. But that speed, you'll get four or five balls in the back rail and just keep going. And then you keep going. It's crazy. So you're not, and there's zero risk of scratching. I wouldn't hit that harder. But yeah, yeah. There's, like if you're in a match in a tournament and you're really trying to not scratch, this is the way to break the ball. Um, just for years, the scratches ended my runs, and now I'm just not going to scratch anymore hardly ever. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you another interesting thing. And, and Doug and I, when we tried to break the world straight pull record, we kind of figured this out. He he looked at me once and he goes, "You know, when you scratch, the run's over." Have you noticed that, John? I'm yeah, like, "Oh yeah." yeah. <laughs> he goes, "Why don't you start breaking softer?" And what happened was, like, I would get this break shot, and normally I'm going to just blast this and scratch down here. So I started hitting it soft, and what happens is, let's say I broke soft and I get stuck in the rack. A lot softer, right? I get stuck in the rack. Now watch this. I started breaking soft, and you'd be surprised how often there's some baby kick hanging that I could fit you just in. kick into. Yeah, like, because I'm just hitting them hard enough to kind of go out and cover the pocket, you know? And so, I I am pretty convinced this is the way to break them, and I think all the great players are going to obviously do that, too. Um, but the really strong thing is that top ball coming right over here straight in the side. You can almost do it like clockwork. When that normally, see, normally that's a tough break shot, and here's why. The rack is impeding the cue ball path to the end rail, so the scratch is on. So when you get this break shot, you can't get the cue ball to go forward because one of these balls yeah, come out. So now forward. you've got to either stick on them or blast draw them. Well, now. You but you know that this ball is yeah, coming right yeah, over here. Now you just play that ball out there for sure. Or, I like, mean, or, even, or even, what's wrong with that? That's going to happen real consistently. So that's awesome. That's a game changer as far as I'm concerned. Um, Irving Crane might have ran 22,000 with this magic. <laughs> but uh, you see how we suggested all the balls are, though? Well, normally this would be really tough to deal with, but with this magic rack, it's really not the end of the world. And then your job as a player is to just pick, 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 pivot, 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 like this. And, and now look, I'm going to break them in a minute. Yeah, and there's already five yeah, balls gone. Five balls out of the way, so now I'm moving less mass. I'm not moving 70 ounces of pool balls. I'm only moving like 50 ounces, right? And then there you go. And, you know, there's times this isn't gonna work and you get hooked or what have you, but what a difference, you know? What yeah. an absolute difference. Playing straight. It's much more controlled. This is the way the old timers played, but you can't run this bigger run. This is the way they broke. They would accept getting stuck as long as they did not want to end their inning on a miss. On a miss. Now, the Germans have this whole 100 mile an hour break shot, yeah. draw it up in the corner. They don't care. They just don't like to get stuck. You know, but they, they go for their, their shots. And yeah. there's a time and place for that. But the old time players, Jimmy Harrison and them guys, they broke, they would love this magic rack. They'd have run a bazillion balls. Yeah. And I'll yeah, tell you something. They're used to. Anybody that thinks those old timers couldn't play, because I see people talk like, you know, today's players are so much better. I disagree. I think Jimmy Harrison guys could have played straight pool with anybody. It's just that there's more good players now. Mm -hmm. But 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 Moscone, 
Harris, all those guys were phenomenal players, and they would have gave Joshua Miller or me or Shaw or anybody all we could stand playing that trade. I promise you. Because they knew how to play, they knew how to pick them off. And, uh, you know, now playing nine ball, sure, I mean, Joshua Miller is probably going to edge out you know, bosses or something, but like, those guys could really play. Man. The numbers don't lie, you know, and I say that all the time, but, you know, I've never seen Harris hit a ball, but I know his high runs like four billion. So <laughs> trust me, he's a good player. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, I came up Danny DeVito here a little short. I, I come up short on this uh, table. Yeah, this table playing a little sluggish. Um, this is a fun shot for the watcher show. Yeah, okay. I'm going to play uh, Donald Trump cross side. So let me pop the V8, and if Bob doesn't screw me on the rack, let me see if we can do this. Cross side, five ball. Trump, cross side. You hit it hard with left English, and it threatens the hole. Oh! But it goes in quite often. Yeah. <laughs> It'll drive your opponent nuts, too, if you make one of those. Let me see if anyone has any, any request for a break shot you want to see demonstrated. Ron Ham, cool. Little Chris, uh, uh, any shot you want to see? Let us know. 24 minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, really, the, the big standard shots are the same, but when you get those funny, real close to the rack angle, instead of hitting 100 miles an hour, throttle back, hit it softer, and this, this, this magic rack is going to help a lot. I mean, this, this right here has been an awful break shot forever and now now let me ask you a question before you shoot this because you're talking what you're talking about you you've got this angle what if the cue ball's over here now you got to hit it with high ball put a little more pace on now you're going to put some yeah, pace now on magic rack or not you're trying to come to the two rails out here but here's kind of the misconception and i'm flattered that anybody thinks i'm this good but they think i hit this with high right english but that's an optical illusion what happens is as the cue ball hits the side of the rack, that imparts a little bit of this on the cue ball, and then the end rail. So the cue ball will go like this, Well, it, so people think, oh, he's hitting it with high right. This is way too hard of a cut to be shooting with right English. I'm just going to hit this with 12 o'clock and stay a little rare. But it'll look like it has right English on it. See, that, that might look like I had right English on that, but I didn't. And yeah, but e and then again, even so, you didn't hit that all no. that hard. Well, I might hit that a fraction harder. A little bit yeah. harder, but I now can, you can blast it. But I don't have to. Yeah. Not with the template. Big old game changer. Um, you can talk about this below the rack. Yeah, this, this this little break shot here. Let's say a break shot like this. I mean, this break shot here. You know, you're obviously not going to try to fire it in and go like this or go for it. You're going to draw it with bottom left, like this. And I'll probably shoot the four over there next, or maybe something will go up table. So this is bottom, bottom left. Try to catch the one heavy enough to do some damage. And just do something like that. Balls go that yeah, way, two ball comes yeah, up. Yeah, that's about all you can do there. Yeah. Don't go forward there. Now what's the first thing I should do here, guys? I should be looking for a dead ball. There's nothing dead here. The only thing dead is me. But, so, but anytime I get stuck, I'm looking for something that's wired out of the pile. Um, this 13 is tough because it, the cue ball is running the wrong way. Yeah. So I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot this combination and try to go around the stack and back out through the middle. There we go. That was nice. Lucky too. <clears throat> but you got it out to the middle where you're going to have options. Yeah. You might have had the one. You might have had something else. Yeah. If they'd open like that every time, I'd be a pretty good player. Well, I'll tell you what. It's, I've talked about this before. That was two shots after the break shot. To get to this result. Yeah, and you know, like a rack like this, I guess let's go through this rack while we're talking about it. All right. Obviously, this five is blocking the seven. So I don't like that. This one ball, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that. Now look, all of a sudden, a little child can get out. So that's kind of <laughs> how you gotta play. You've got to work on those first couple of issues. And then at the end of the rack, now you might look at this right here and go. Well, this isn't really a good cue ball and end pattern, but anytime you get the two balls near each other, they complement each other. So if you get straight on this one, you can get on that one. 
get a little angle on that one too much, this one gets you in line. So anytime I have a little family here like this, I can get straight in and now the angle carries me there or too, too much angle and then I can hold. So sometimes leave them together and you'd be surprised at how uh, easy directs can be. And this ball gets you on gets this. You, well, not easily, but it should work. Okay, so we're gonna try to get rid of the 914. Always get above the ball. Don't try to always play shape like this ball, then this ball. This ball's higher up. Higher up. Yeah. And come down. So now, this is the part of the game I enjoy. At the end of the rack, with every ball that I remove from here on out, my precision has to be more because if I get out of line, I don't have any time to get back in line. So this is where I'm cheating pockets. I'm really trying to get the ball close and then land with the right angle because, see, like right there, that's hideous. I'm, I'm totally out of line. The run's right. over now. Right. Not well. Now you got to play a little nine ball to get well, back. Now in I got to use the three as a break shot. Really, you would go to the three. Well, I mean, at this point, I straight shoot the thirteen. Or you're not. No. Okay. No, I messed up here. All right. So, and I don't know what other people call it. I call that a sacrifice. You're sacrificing the break yeah. ball to keep the run going. Yeah. Now the other break shot I could do is I could use the the thirteen, but we're not going to do that. So we're going to try. To go like this and get this angle, which feeds me this way into right here. And this rack, I mean, it fell apart because I missed my mark. Oh, 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 oh. Well, and if you get straight, you can just go straight across. Yeah, that's right. But now this is an important shot because if my cue ball gets right here, I can't hold. I have to stay above. So do you want to hit the second rail? Yes, or no? the rail is a speed gauge. Okay, yep. See how I touch the second rail? That helps me get just off the rail mentally. Now you're perfect. Yeah, yeah, I hit that pretty good. So this break, now this break shot would normally be terrible, right? But with this template, I could probably smoothly go right into the side of them. They'll open, the cue ball will come right down here. This isn't, this isn't too bad for the magic, right? I'll tell you what, I am gonna put a little pace on this. This is pretty flat. So what you gotta do here, the trick to these break shots, I think, is to put the tip as high as you can on the cue ball. I want the cue ball to literally be like changing gears and just hitting the rack and jumping and spinning. It, it can't be like a real muted dead hit. It's got to be zipping with topspin. So raise your tip way up. Try to hold your head still. Just let it go. Our miscue. You miscued, wow. but it made the ball. <laughs> no, well, put it, put it, we'll put it back. Well, I should. Head. I got any dead balls? No, I do not. That was, I mean, well, here well, was a miss. Just, to, just to give you an example, though, see the eight? I'm going to make the eight down the corner sometimes. So when you're playing a, a high run attempt, you know, you yeah, got a see, chance. I got a chance. You got to shoot shots like that sometimes to run big numbers. For those who don't know, John was saying shoot at the top of the, the cue ball. Yeah, you got to remember that when missing. you're shooting like that, the the bottom of your tip is what's going to hit the cue ball. So you can aim higher than you think. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, you know, you have to miss you sometimes to spin the ball like the good players do. See, that top spin really got me, it got me away from the rack. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of screwed here. But... Well, you can cut the one in. Oh, sure. Well, or the see, nine. Or the, the nine. nine is, the nine, this shot looks pretty easy when you're on about 420. This looks like a basketball through a Cheerio. Right <laughs> I mean, it really does. People, just get up there and run four or five hundred one time, and you'll be like, oh my God, the easiest shots are so easy. Uh, clip, so, clip this on your collar and keep talking. Uh, okay. So I'm going to try to wiggle through a rack for you guys here. Boy, this is hard to get on my shirt collar here. Okay, let's see if I can. Boy, you really got the setup, don't you? Now, one. All right. So this is what I, I like the other night. I had like twelve viewers, and then I had seventeen mm -hmm. people are watching now. How many? Thirty-nine. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. It's nice to see that there's some people like to play straight pull, of course. I'm telling you, these guys love it. They love straight pull. We want to keep building the community. Now, now, one thing, and, I, and I'm not trying to pick on nobody, but the one thing I really see when I watch the players that are trying to learn, of course, I did the same thing, 
is you guys are shooting the balls too hard and you're running into stuff too often. And it even you know, you really gotta play like careful. Now here it's just short short side position on the five. Now here I need to nudge this 14 over, but I don't want the cue ball to do this. So I gotta use right English, hit the five through this side of the hole so I can catch the 14 thick enough to see the one. This is actually delicate and can go bad if I hit this. If I hit this wrong, I could get hooked here. Yeah, that was a good shot because that was delicate. Now the three is a pretty decent key ball, but it's not that great because, well, how do I get up here to get on it? I'm gonna have to do some big multi-rail travel thing. <clears throat> Believe it or not, I'm gonna get rid of it right now. And on bigger pockets, this wouldn't be so bad. That's a pretty spooky little shot, again, when you're on a big number. So let's just come back up to the middle of the table, the high right English. And now again, this is where your precision better be kind of half decent. Now this is an interesting situation that, that sometimes will work. I gotta be feeling pretty good and playing good, but I'll drive the eight to here and out for a key ball to connect to the four. So let's try that. So you're already you're gonna break Oh, well, because of this end pattern. See, now that eight connects so well to the four that that's going to lead me to the four. Even though the four is a tad high, I like this enough, uh, you know, because getting on a break ball really good is very important. And you notice how I'm just dribbling everything in? Yeah. Now, here's a shot that really gets misplayed a lot, okay? People want to get perfect on the eight. And what they do is they try to go two rails and they end up here where you can't really hold, but you can't really realistically go down. Or they go like this. So sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not in love with this, but sometimes you do this right here. You go two rails out and you commit. I don't even have to go two rails, but you go like this. You, you accept a little bit bigger angle High left English, go to the in rail and come up and you're almost trying to scratch in the side in your mind. And again, on big pockets, I wouldn't be too spooked. This is a little spooky, but I commit to the angle to get the angle. Yeah, this break shot here is a, this is where you need the template because I'm not gonna be able to hit this break shot hard enough to realistically open them. Damn, you're like racking it a half a second. But let's see if I can smooth one in here. I hit that fatter than my ex-wife right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boy, I'm playing terrible. Now, let me shoot that. I'm going to shoot that break shot again. I'm going to start this rack with that. that. That's disgusting. What was I about like that? I had to make kind of a funky little short hand bridge here. Oh, sure. If they gave me two tries on tour, I'd be a pretty good player. <laughs> so now here, well, this is beautiful here. Okay, and anytime you land on something, okay, now this is a perfect, this is a perfect example right here. M well, most players, most players, they, they want to shoot this, then this. I might shoot the one first because it just kind of gets stuff out of the way and then I can really go into these balls. So sometimes if you land on something dead straight, shoot it now. But also, instead of, see on a loose table, instead of shooting this and this, you can shoot this to this and then you have more insurance. Uh, so we're going to try to leave the nine set in there. There we go. Now I can go into these balls and I probably have a little more insurance. I got a little thin on this, a little anorexic. That was a good shot. It should go. And so there's my insurance, insurance, what have you. Now let's get the cue ball behind the seven. Because anytime you shoot a shot and you can remove a problem, that's kind of what you want to do playing straight pull. Because otherwise you're scrambling around all the time trying to solve little trying to solve little issues, right? Yeah, so, well, okay, this ball here leads to the five real nice. That's kind of a long shot. 
If I was on a giant run, I really wouldn't want to shoot that. Now here, I'm going to go lightly into this 12 ball. I know I say don't run into balls, but this is pretty free here. Of course, it got absolutely as hard as it could, which is why we say don't do that. But I would do that. That's, that's just going to happen sometimes. Boy, that was a nice shot there. And now again, we're getting to the point in the rack where I better start making up my mind here. This is no, so I have to, I have to use uh, the eight to move the 10 a little bit. Well, it's another sacrifice. Yeah. No, I'm gonna leave the 10. I'm gonna. Or you, leave, you can break the five. Yeah. Okay. I wanna, well, I wanna get on the five, really. Okay, now let's try to get, see this is a decent key ball. It's not fantastic, but it's half decent. Okay. Because now I'm gonna be able to get, get the right angle. yeah, I mean, it's kind of laying a little funky, but it's gonna work. And I know that, oh yeah, the second rail. This is, now this break shot, this is just on the borderline of like, it's missable. They're all missable, but here's another one where don't murder it, let the magic rack help you. You gotta aim this ball with 12 o'clock, aim, aim it to the right side of the pocket because the 10's gonna come with the cue ball just a little bit. So it's kind of a tricky one because you gotta aim thinner than you think you should. There we go. That acted just kind of like I was hoping it would. Now we all hate combinations, but you got to shoot this one. I almost missed it. So. Now, because we have insurance, this would be a decent time to ch chip some balls out here. Okay. Now let's uh, Let's shoot the combination and move the 713 a little bit. Because they were laying kind of, they were kind of ganked up. Yeah, let's get the nine. Yeah, that's a good break ball. Now, you see the 12? The 12 is a fantastic uh, key ball. I'm not, I mean, yeah, it is. Well, I can't use it though. Now, I wanted to save that. The 12 is a great pivot ball for the 13. Yeah. But again, you know, I'm a pretty good player and I still am always trying to make the shots almost unmissable by shooting soft. I, I watch people play straight pull and man, they are hitting the ball too damn hard. Now here's a, here's a, uh, I guess you'd call this an end pattern that works pretty good. You can go six, 15, 11, seven. So the problem is that means I gotta get, when you get to well, I, I, I've gotta get to the five. So I'm gonna shoot a sh cool looking shot here just for fun. Now I'm trying to teach people. Let me, let me play right here. <laughs> let me play right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, I'll tell you what. The 15, seven, the 15, seven, 13 is a good end pattern too. So we're gonna do this, we have to pivot we have to pivot just right here, okay? We have to come around two rails and land right on this 15 to get on the six. I almost missed it. There we go, perfect. Now I gotta hold, I gotta hold this cue ball. Bottom left. This table's playing a little stingy right now. Look at this shot. How do you like this shot for all your money? Let's see if I make a good strike. Okay, that's pretty good. That's got to that's got to bring my Fargo up two and a half points right there for sure. There we go. 
Beat the pocket, move draw. Okay. That was nice. Here's another one that's kind of a, normally you would kind of smoke it hard. I'm just gonna hit it pretty smooth. Although the cue ball can, and the cue ball can't get to the end rail like I want it to. This one can scratch off a double click. It's going to go click, click, and turn left on me here. And it, oh, I missed the ball. Well, I mean, <laughs> it did have that action where it went down. Oh, John. Well, but you see how the ball's like laid up in front of the hole? That's the magic rack. I hit those real soft. The cue ball does this. I, I really think that I'd like to, I haven't played straight pole really since my 626 and I've just been doing other things. I really would like to make another concerted effort using this template because my goodness, does that open the balls easy. No, this shot you just had. Yeah, it was spooky. Are you ever gonna be tempted to shoot that low as low? No, no. No? No, it's such a hard shot. I'd rather cue it a high ball and no spin. And it, kind of it, it did what, well, it did what I thought it would do. Yeah. Well, that's part of it. And it could have just as easily hit here and you look like a genius. I mean, yeah. sometimes sometimes <coughs> they just scratch. Let me try that break shot with draw just for fun. That's just a really tough break shot with that big angle. Now this one is a perfect follow. Uh, the other one was like closer to the rack, so it was kind of, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like this one here, I guess I could try drawing it, which I would never do normally. Yeah, see, but it, but it, it can very easily end up right here, but yeah, that worked. Oh, uh, yeah. That worked. Man, this table's playing grippy. In that shot, the, uh, the ball here did not come over to the side pocket. No. That had to do with the... Well, just, I, I didn't hit the top two balls. I probably hit one row down. Went straight into the yeah, side. yeah, exactly. But here's, you know, again, this is, this is a perfect example of Okay, I could shoot the 10 and go into him. Well, the, 10 can, the cue ball could get stuck. The cue ball can end up here. I might not get a shot. What about getting rid of the nine, then the 13, then the six in the side, shoot the 15 and blast them, right? Right. Hit this with middle right, get the cue ball to check a little bit. Now look, now, now this is a little baby shot, a little bit of right English. Now I might be able to control what I'm doing a little better. And those balls should open. Did I go too far? Eh, I kind of did actually, yeah. So let's regroup, shoot the 12, try to go twice out to the middle. I write English. Okay. Well, I hit it just a fraction. Nah, this is all right. Yeah, it came out all right. Now this one, just smooth follow. Don't try to over-engineer this. This is a hard shot. Just try to cut it in. You know, I see people spinning their ball and all that. Like, I don't know about doing all that. Boy, this is trouble, trouble. So <clears throat> I think in a spot like this, you gotta take your medicine and play, play the uh, behind the rack break shot. Sometimes you just get in a spot where you're gonna have to. Yeah. Now I can try to push the seven over, but it isn't gonna work, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I knew it was going too low. And now we're gonna go, yeah, we're gonna go seven. These balls get on the one, get right there. Actually, I'll tell you what, Yeah, that'll work. That'll work, actually. That'll work. I'll tell you, this is where you better be precise, though, or you're going to get out of line big time. There we go. Now, just don't try to drag this into position. Shoot like a little let go stroke like that, because that's easy. Like where the cue ball goes like this and turns over. If you try to stun down there, you can end up like there or something. Take a big angle here. Don't try to, don't try to get here. Get a steep angle because if you can't make this, you're not going to run hundreds anyway. So just accept the angle. <clears throat> now this break shot is so damn hard and backwards that I won't use high inside English. It's too hard to make the ball. I'm just going to hit it with a high ball, maybe a little right, and hope my cue ball hits there, there, and squirts up to the middle a little bit. Bob's gonna slug me here. There we go. Which one? 
Hit this with a high right ball, mostly high, a little bit of right, and really hit it firm. And that, that's enough pace to, you know. Ooh, that was a good shot. I mean, it hit the rack and it came back and then it went forward again. It didn't go yeah. this way. It went that way. Well, I'll tell you what, this is um this is a pretty brutal rack here as far as straight pull racks go. I'm so straight in, I can't hardly even do anything with the cue ball. Now, if I was on a big run, I would have made sure the 10 passed the one. I'm a little tired right now and being lazy. So I'll tell you what I might do here. I might get here on the one and go right into the stack because I'm running out of time to move them anyway. So I'm gonna use the four to get perfect on the one. Now just go ahead and go right into the 13 here with a high left cue ball. And scratch right in the corner. <laughs> Boy, that'd be an unlucky scratch here. But it kind of was the right shot. Now, this is a concern. Now, if I'm really playing good, I could try to push this three up, but it, I would risk missing the eight because I got to shoot it like one mile an hour. You see, that, that was a spooky shot, and it worked, but I really wouldn't want to do it. So now I'm going to shoot. I'm going to roll forward and get a heavy enough angle. When I draw the two, I got a pretty good chance to hit these balls. Now, if I whiff them, I've got insurance with the 11. So this is an okay shot. It's not great. I don't advise it. But I think it was a necessary evil. Now, if I don't get a shot there, just it's not my day. <laughs> I, about tore, I about tore a muscle shoot in that one. So now play shape on the 7 and the 11. Okay, now this is, <laughs> this is pretty rough. How do you do with that 13? Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. Either one could be a break ball. Yeah, the 5 can be a break ball, but I really, the 5 connecting to the this is this is trouble. Thirteen's out of the rack. Ooh, well, it's close. No, it's oh rack. yeah. With the well, that's another thing with the temp. That's why they're illegal, <laughs> yeah. because it gives you way more real estate. I mean, I guarantee Moscone would have liked to use these template rings. <laughs> so we're gonna try to get on the five with a bunch of spin here. This is quite missable. I am happy to make that one. And now, obviously, got to hit my mark pretty good here, or I'm in trouble. And I hit it like a guy with Tourette's. Oh, boy. So now, let's say you do something like this. I mean, you could, you could try to draw into the three and push it right here, cue yeah. ball's right here, and then that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. Got to drive it down by the corner and try to make it a break shot. And, of course, it got so straight, I can't do nothing. But, you know, that's not the end of the world in a match. You just play safe. Wow. Oh, I, know. I shot a brick shot like this. I'm going to try to catch the corner. Yeah. I might even be able to cheat the pocket enough to wiggle a couple off the top of the stack. <coughs> Man, this table is playing tough. It's playing kind of, not damp, but it is just playing kind of tough. All right. Let's see if we can cheat the pocket and hit the seven or the... 15, just enough to move a couple balls off the top. That sets it. When I'm using this big old fishing pole, it's so hard to control the hit because the cue gets away from me. I mean, right. so anyway, I think that's, that's enough to get everybody pointed in the right direction. Just don't use this info to beat me in a tournament, okay, you guys? <laughs> Man, that's hard to reach out with this stupid extension and hit the ball right. Oh, I hope you guys like that. We're dead tired, and uh, yeah, we just yeah. wanted to talk a little bit about. We had a request to talk about straight pool break shots, so nothing, nothing deep there, nothing fancy, but just, just critical, deep important deep stuff. Yeah, and that's these, I mean, these templates, and the the official rules for high runs include, you know, verbiage about how to deal with those racks. So they're allowed. Yeah, they're allowed now. I mean, now that. Now that the, the, the home run record's been broke, they've moved the fence and they make it okay. 
And so it, it's, it's, a, it's a great help on the break shot, but boy, you still got to play some straight pool in order to get to the racks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't care. I mean, 700 ball runs are great, but I don't care. Your pockets are just wide. You're magic right now. That's a good feeling. <laughs> All right, man, we're going to sign off. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm not going to be back online for about a week. And so uh, vacation time, and then we're going to get back at it. And I'm sure I'll be talking about some stuff that I learned. And uh, hopefully we'll see some more high runs. But I hope you all heard John say just a minute ago that this is a difficult table. And that's my excuse for every shot I've missed. <laughs> all right, that's 53 minutes, and that's plenty. Have a good night, guys. Have a good weekend. See you later. Yeah, well.